welcome to today's event, Business Management, What Comes Next, Alumni Panel, organized by our alumni relations team, Evgenia McLeod, myself, and Dr. Satine Dilek Fedler. My name is Mina, and I'll be your panel chair today. I'm one of the seminar leaders of this module, and I see some familiar faces in this room. Thank you for being here. I'm joined by a wonderful panel of recent graduates from various business management courses who will share insights on career options after graduation. Welcome. The panel will briefly introduce themselves, then I'll put some questions to them, followed by plenty of time for a Q&A. After the Q&A, some colleagues from the alumni team will share some information on helpful employability opportunities and resources for you. Finally, we'll have a little social session at the end where you can ask speakers further questions and connect with each other. I have some, house, uh, I have some housekeeping to uh, run by. This session will be recorded, but students will not be recorded. There will be around 30 minutes towards the end for a Q&A session. Questions can be asked by raising your hand or submitting questions to Mentimeter by opening menti.com and entering the code above. Today we have three alumni speakers who not so long ago sat in your very seats and have gone to pursue their interests in exciting career fields. Let's welcome them. We have Aram, Aram, Evelyn, and Mohammed who's on the way. So, uh, Aram, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello everyone, my name is Aram Tufan and I am the founder of Happy Street. Hello, my name is Ibrahim Nautebi, and I'm the founder of Shoah Consultancy and Accounting Services Limited and BSEG Limited. Thank you. Fantastic. And we'll see if Mohammed shows up. If not, we'll introduce him at a later time. I'll start the questions. So tell me, Aram and Evelyn, how was your experience at the University of Westminster? Did the university help you figure out which path you wanted to take? And if yes, how? Um, mm, I don't really know. I think I kind of figured it out myself about which path to take. And I have received the best support that was out there. In fact, more, uh, more than any other universities would do for their students. And I'm really, really grateful for their support. And thank you for inviting me here. Thank you for being here. Evelyn. Yes. Um, when I joined the university, I wanted to be an accountant or to own my own accounting firm. So that has been my passion from a very young age. So when I joined the university, I had like an idea of what I was going to do, but I didn't know how to get started. So through the university, I got all the mentoring from first year up to the end when I graduated, and up to now, they're still supporting me. So they've taken through from the initial stages of my company up to where it is right now. And I'm so grateful for the support from the university. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you for sharing. All right, so tell me, did you have any initial worries in terms of finding employment, or in your case, like starting your own company, considering COVID-19, if you happen to graduate during that time, vis-a-vis -vis what actually happened in reality? Um, I think COVID really provided me with a space to think about how to develop my project. Um, and um, I always wanted to create my own business and I've always been very creative. Um, and when the COVID happened, I took this opportunity to build my business, which is Happy Student. And I thought, you know, there, there would, you know, they wouldn't have, we wouldn't have COVID for a very long time anyway. But in any case, um, we always try to find solution to any obstacle comes on our way. And I think COVID was one of them. Um, and it provided me with uh, great tools to, uh, to think and to, to have milestones and to achieve them and what to do, etc. So I had, I had a really great time to be able to focus on my work. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that experience. Evelyn? Uh, in reality, my field, because I did finance, my field is very competitive and finding work is quite challenging. So you have to have to upscale yourself so that you are competitive in the industry. 
Um, so I tried to apply for jobs, but I wasn't getting exactly what I really wanted. So that motivated me because I had the skills and I, I knew what to do. So it motivated me to go ahead and start my own consultancy and start providing the services instead of working for someone else. And I started my company during COVID-19 when we were at home, we were stuck and studying. So I, I said this was the perfect time for me because I had this from a very long time, but I was keeping it off like you're scared to do it. But with COVID, it gave me the go ahead and the support from the university, the trainings and everything like that. So it's been like, it's, Starting a business is, is easy, but it's like a roller coaster. I have to be persistent to, to what you really want because sometimes you might feel like giving up so that you go, you go into employment, but if you persist, you get where you want. Can I add something? Of course. Obviously, we only share our happy moments on our social media, on our you know, LinkedIn profile. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs as we, you know, it's not easy to get funding for your project and it's hard, but I think. You know, it's uh, it's possible to come over those obstacles if you just you know focus and continue working on you know achieving your milestones. And also getting mentoring around and people to support you around with those projects. Exactly. And the, those yeah. people who will take you like if you can't do it, someone can tap you on the shoulder and say, no, you can carry on. It helps. And also networking with so many different people, mm -hmm. it helps you to get that first client. And with that first client, you have to do the best. Work. You give them the best work so that they can refer you to other people. So Exactly. It's like the university, really. I mean, when you want to write the best paper, you would go to your professor because they have been there and they know how to help you. It's, it's exactly the same with the business. It's always nice to go and get support from people around you. They are going to help you, like, uh, like the university does at the moment. Or, you know, when you graduate, people are going to help you. And the only thing you have to do is to ask for help. And one more thing, like yeah. when initially when, when you're starting, income is not gonna come in as you actually projected. It might take a few months, a few years before you actually earn that income. So it's always best to have a backup, like maybe you can do some part-time work that get some work on the site, but also as you grow your business so that you can um, cater for those expenses that those coming in as your business is growing so that you're not just focused on the business especially at the initial stages because money might take some time to come in as you expected when the money starts flowing then you can reduce and focus more onto your business thank you for sharing those insights our third panelist Mohammed, is here hi Mohammed. thank hi. you for joining us please introduce yourself to Students. Thank you. Sorry, everyone, for the slight delay. Um, I'm Mohammed, graduated in 2022. I studied uh, business management, digital business, and I currently work in marketing in the digital performance uh, department at Four Agency Worldwide, which is a media and communications agency. Thank you. Tell us, Mohammed, can you walk us through the hiring process of your current job? How did that work out for you? Yeah. So, in terms of like, the hiring process, you know. First, it was just a simple application. you know, portray yourself to, to other people. So in terms of assessment centers, one of the main things that employers look for is um, how open you are and how confident you are as well. So one of the main things that is underrated by a lot of people or undermined is people skills. So that's one of the main things that people should, should be looking at as well. Thank you for sharing that. And we have two people who started their own business. Can you perhaps tell us you, you both kind of mentioned up and down and roller coaster. Can you maybe briefly tell us what, what the first stages of starting your own business were like? I'll go first. Yes, of course. Because you have to have the idea of what you're going to do and to who. Because you might have like a very good idea, but who is going to buy your idea? You might think that everybody can say to this person, this person, this person, but you have to narrow it down so that you can know, you can focus on that particular niche. 
because starting a business um, it's not easy like uh, your friends will, will take your services they'll always say no actually you might get more services from strangers like supporting you than your immediate family and friends but don't take it personally because they don't really need your services they might not trust you at that point but in the future they might trust you so when you're starting your business, you have to find out which is your niche market. You have to register. You have to have like legally registered in the, in the UK or whichever company or country you're trading in. You have to get all the legal requirements, right? You need to get your, like your registered address. It can't be like a virtual office. You can hire an office. The university, I think, does provide us with some virtual office like where you can work part, like, part time. Like, um, you can use some space to work from. Then, um, once you register your company, you need to know whether you're going to be solo or you're going to be like with a partner to work together. And you, you, when you're working with someone else as your partner, you have to make it, make it clear like how is your shares going to be shared, like the profits, how are they, are they going to be shared and the losses. So after those initial registration, then you go through your marketing. You do have the marketing, uh, you can create your website so that you have a landing page when you tell people that have this company, but they have a, you have a landing page where they can actually go and see your products. And after those things, then you start promoting, you do your flyers, uh, you network, and you get people to know your business. You have to open up a bank account because it's always best to separate your finances from the business so that it's for proper accountability, when, especially when it comes to taxes. Because you have to, um, at the end of the year, you have to tell the taxman how much you've made, what, what, what expenses you've made, like income and expenses, so that you can pay the right tax. And, and at some point, you might want to register for VAT as well if you're purchasing products uh, where you can claim some money back, but that might take, like, you, can, you don't really need to until you, you, earn a, a, um, you have your income around 85,000. Okay? And um, you so must com be compliant. Sorry, is it eighty five thousand? Yeah, eight five k, eight five thousand k. Okay. Yeah, that's wow. why you can register. But you can register voluntarily before that. Okay. You can do it voluntary registration because those you, it's very, actually a very good way of earning, getting back some money that you have spent. Mm -hmm. So because you you, you 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 tell the taxman how much uh, your in input tax and your output, so they compare them. Mm -hmm. If you if you spent less or more. Like you spent more, they can pay you back some of the money, so it's very really good. Very interesting. It's good to know knowledge is power. So <laughs> it's, always, it's always good to be in good terms with the tax man when you're running your business. Otherwise, in the future, you, you get yeah. applications. Yeah. And they do very big fines. Accountant and the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two very important things in, in any business. Aaron, please could, go ahead. Yeah. Could you please repeat the question? Of I don't course. want to go off the topic. No, no, I mean, you are welcome to go off the topic yeah. as well. I mean, um, <laughs> walk us through what the first stages were of setting up your, your, your business, your own business. Okay. Um, well, like every journey, um, when I first started Happy Student, um, I was very optimistic. I thought, everything was going to be ready within three months. And that three months became six months. That six months became one year and then two years. So it's, it's a really process. Uh, but it's steps by step. So you learn as you, you know, walk through. And in my case, um, what I did, I registered my company immediately because it gave me um, the hope and the, you know, the drive that I needed, and, and I like that to see that paper and having my company name registered. Um, and then um, the next thing, what I did, I uh, I borrowed some money from uh, my closest circle, and with that money, I was able to create some uh, not even a website, but um, something that I needed to show to people. Um, and then eventually, I realized that actually building an app is going to cost a lot more than what you know I could get from uh, my close circle. Um, so what I did, I started a Kickstarter campaign and, and there I raised enough money to build um, a web app because I still couldn't afford to build my application. Um, so eventually um, I was able to create my web app and with that I applied some competitions and I won't, I'm sure you are familiar with the big idea competition um, so I won two awards there, and then I'm now part of Microsoft startup program, and um, and there are a lot of other things that have been 
uh, that I am part of and we are working together. Um, now I have to, now we are turned into a software. So the idea when I first had was obviously what I'm going, what, what I, I am doing right now, but I just didn't know that how this was going to develop to here. Um, but it was, I was very optimistic at the beginning, and I'm still very optimistic. I mean, at the end of the day, hope is what really drives you. Otherwise, you know, you just, you know, you wouldn't really work uh, on any project or you wouldn't take any journey. Um, yes, that's my, you know, experience with Happy Studio. Uh, I'll add one more thing, one important thing is insurance. You have to, uh, to buy insurance that, uh, to protect your business and yourself. Uh, maybe like professional indemnity, so that when anything goes wrong, you, you, you are protected. Um, and another thing, like when you're, especially when you're raising your initial capital, you know when you're still a student, uh, a student you get some pocket money from your parents, so you can save that and add it on to, uh, to be like your initial capital. Some businesses don't really require so much investment at the beginning, like for consultants, like an accounting firm, I didn't need so much like you do need. Mm -hmm. So in some business, you don't need so much capital. So it's all that you drag up, then this gets started. Believe in yourself, you can do it. And don't listen to the negative people, because always people will tell people that I'm going to do this, people say, no, someone has done it before and they failed. So always believe in yourself that you can actually do it. That belief will give you that drive. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so I have a question for Mohammed. In the spirit of full transparency here, we have a lot of students here who uh, sometimes worry a lot about their grades. Do you think your final grade had an impact on the job opportunities you had after graduation? I would say that in terms of the final grade, of course, you know, it's really important. Um, in terms of, you know, just standing out to employers, that's one of the main things the employers look for. They, the, you know, you want to stand out out like all of the applications. You know, the job market is really competitive right now. So in terms of getting the best grades possible, that's basically like imperative. So um, getting good grades is really important. But at the same time, experience is is something that a lot of people look for as well. So in terms of experience, it's not only it's not only the internship route. It's not only the placement route. You can also do like volunteering or you know inside events or um, you know networking events that can really help you um, in terms of like standing out from the from the crowd. So in terms of grades, yes, they're important, and you know it's something that everyone should really you know put a focus on. But experience is something that employers do look for, and um, that is the main thing that kind of you know makes it stand out in the crowd. Can I add one more thing? Um, when I first had the idea, I had to do research and find out if other people were having the same problem as I had, which was having difficulties when I first moved to London as an international student. I didn't know what GP was until I was sick. And of course, you are, for the first time in your life, away from your comfort zone, you know, away from your family and friends, and um, you are in a foreign country, and uh, there is language barrier, a new culture, so um, for me it was really hard. And then I went to this program, I don't know if it still exists, within the University of Westminster, it's called uh, Students as Co-Creators Program. Yes, it exists. It exists, it's really good. I was given two professors, two PhD students, and two students of my choice, and we had to run a very thorough research for one year. Um, and we find out that not just international students, but also home students who are traveling from another city to come here to study, were struggling to settle down. And that moment, that's when I decided, okay, you know, this platform is needed and I'm going to create it, so. Great, thank you for sharing that. Evelyn, would you like anything to add about grades? How your grades, um Actually, grades can be a very good impact on your, on your career. Because especially the last, the, the last month, the last, the final, your final year's grades. Because employers look for how are you been performing, but also they look for other activities. Have you been volunteering at the university? Which other, like, not just the academics, but what, what other other thing that you're doing at the at the university? Because I remember myself when I was a student, I used to. Um, 
volunteer. I, I was a course rep, I was a school representative. I used to volunteer for other organizations. So all that experience adds up. Imagine, volunteer work is good, but it's because you're gaining experience. And also, that tops up with your grading. Because once you graduate, they ask you, they need experience. You're competing with someone who has been working. So in, as a new, a, new, a new graduate, you don't have anything. But if you've done some, something uh, like alongside your studies, you can show that to them. So yeah. it's not you. just that way, but also other things you do. I think you've all highlighted how gaining experience um, through volunteer or other opportunities within the university is highly valuable. Um, could you perhaps give us some examples of where the best place could be to find um, volunteer opportunities or work opportunities, research opportunities? What platforms can students today use and tap into? Um, the first one would be in college. For, for, for mm -hmm. the university itself, mm -hmm. because it offers so many, like, um, you can be a course, a course representative or a school representative, that's the first part of it. You can volunteer in your local community if you go to a mosque or you go to a church or, you do, or for those people who, 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 have, who go to churches, you can volunteer for your church either, either to run for their accounts or be, volunteer to maybe to, make, to be their administrator. Because me, I remember I was, um, I was being, because I was in finance and I volunteered for my church to run their, um, their accounts while I was studying because I needed that experience. And also you can volunteer in other sectors, maybe your local council, they have some voluntary work. You can work with maybe the disabled students or anything that, it doesn't really need to be like in line of your academics, but anything, any work where you're working with people, it shows that you can, be, you can interact well with people. It improves your communication skills. And the, peop the person you're working with, you, might, you can learn something different from what you're actually volunteering for. And those, if you do that voluntary work, some employers, they actually take you on on a full-time basis so that once you've graduated, they can, you, can, you don't have to search for work because they just take you on. I would also say engage as well. So I also worked at university as well. So I worked at Westminster Enterprise Network and I got that job through Engage. So I would highly recommend Engage in terms of like the interviews that you can gain as well. I'm sure that there's there's a really high uh, percentage rate of getting interviews via Engage. So I'd highly recommend that in terms of like the internal jobs at a university, they're they're really um, you know opportunistic for you for everyone here. Um, I think that you know we've got the West, Westminster Working Culture, we've got Westminster Enterprise Network. Yeah. Um, we've got so many different departments at the university where you can actually excel and get that experience you need, and it could be. You know, if you, if you, if it's worth a try, it could be much easier than getting a job externally. So, I'd highly recommend you know applying within the university. Um, but I'd also recommend you know if, if you know web, websites like LinkedIn or Engage or Indeed or other websites they're not really working with for you. I'd highly recommend applying directly on the company website as well. So, for example, on J.P. Morgan or PwC or whatever company. Um, and I'd also recommend applying straight on their, on their website because you can also find out their insight events or other, other you know, programs they have that you can actually attend um, which can you know, help you in the application process as well. Oh, well, I'll mention one thing on LinkedIn. They, uh, when, I, when I was students, we, we used to have those free trainings on LinkedIn. I don't know whether they're still yes. that's available. Yeah, LinkedIn has a very useful resource where you can learn a lot of skills from there. So I advise you to utilize that before you graduate because there is a lot of information there which is free to you all and you get your certificates. Those certificates, they might not be important right now, but once you've graduated, they will be very, very good for you. So. And I think there is also Microsoft Word where they, they, they train you. Microsoft, yeah, they have that program where you, you do that, you go through that test and everything. And give it up. Um, would you like to add any resources for students to? Yeah, I think they, they're all, you know, the ones that I've been you know, getting information from. And I think We Network, Westminster Enterprise yeah. Network, is, is a very good one if you are going to start your own business, whether as a freelancer or you want to be a startup founder. And I think they provide you with every necessary tools to develop your project. And that's where, for instance, in my case, it was the place where I turned Happy Student into a business model 
uh, to make it more sustainable. And it's a really good program. Okay, Westminster Enterprise Network. Take, take it down. <laughs> and also one more thing, I'll make it clear to, to your lecturers or, your, or that you actually want to start a business so that you can get, because there's a lot of support in the university, but once they know that you actually want to get started, they can find you a mentor who can take you through that process, from the initial stages up to where you want to go. So make use of your lecturers as well. Thank you. So making use of your lecture is as part of your first network, your first circle of network. Can you please maybe walk us through how important networking was for your individual careers? And what are some of your best practices for networking, authentic networking? Okay. Um, well, when I, I mean, you start networking from university, right? You meet with people from different culture and you get to learn. Um, you know their background, etc., and you're exposed to a com you know a different world, which is a first step. Step, and then eventually, I think uh, network is very important when you want to be introduced to someone, or refer to someone, or um, just to have access to them, to listen to their stories or advice for even ten minutes. It, it's a really great insight. Um, how I use, obviously I started using it the ones from the university, but when I did my Kickstarter campaign, I went to all the people that I knew were public profiles, and I asked them to donate or provide um, mentorship or donate a work that they have or you know, something that they could do uh, in which I used it for my Kickstarter campaign, and it was very useful because you know, then I was able to give something in return to people who were donating uh, money to my uh, startup at that stage, but eventually um, I am also um, so I am Microsoft partner, so I have access to all the executives there, and every time I am in a in a difficult position where I you know I come to face with a, with an obstacle, I would go to them, and they would always always you know would help me and show me how to. You know, navigate around that obstacle that I had in that, that moment, and I think I was able to get that you know um, privilege, I would say, because of the network I have created uh, along the road through my project. So, Mohammed, um, I recommend you know creating the LinkedIn account. So, if anyone doesn't have like LinkedIn account, I highly recommend that. Um, that's like your online CV. So, if you do go to networking events. A lot of people, you know, you can connect with them via LinkedIn, so I'd highly recommend that. Um, and in terms of like, you know, networking in general, on-site and online, it's something that will really help you, not only for the short term, but also for the long term as well. For example, um, I remember I attended a JP Morgan um, Insight event, it was like a networking event online. And, you know, it was like a simple introduction to their graduate program and whatnot. And a year later, they actually gave me priority in the application process, just because I attended that online networking event. So it can really help you, um, you know, in many ways and in ways that you might not even foreshadow. So um, I highly recommend that. And in terms of on-site networking, even if it's not related to your field, if it's not related to your, you know, career ambitions. I still recommend you to go and you know job fairs as well. Uh, you can get really, really strong contacts and people you can keep in contact with for, for the future. And they can help you, you know, if you decide to embark on a new career journey or on your current career journey, you can, they can help you as well, you know, with expert advice and uh, you don't you don't want to get advice from people who don't have any experience. You wanna get, you know, support and um, knowledge from people who actually are experts in their field and you can find those people that are never networking events so yeah uh, Evelyn uh, there's networking but please do network with a purpose uh, you, you network with someone but you know that this is really actually what I want to get if someone if you're networking and you see that maybe this person especially for us ladies we find it really hard to network with gentlemen because they might they might think the other way around so network with the purpose and make it clear to the person what your interests are not just to because they might I, i'm not that 
the just the reality, because men, they tend to, I'm not offending all men here, but we ladies, we tend to need to, to find it difficult networking with men because they might have think about other hidden agenda. But once you make it clear from the beginning, that, that, that line will never be crossed. So network with a purpose. And also, don't judge people when you're networking. Anyone can help you or can lead you to the, to the next step. I remember when I was working, I got the opportunity to work in the government legal department. I had, because it was new field for me, it was legal, I'm in finance. I had to get to know about where everything is and I had a very short time, time scale project to, to work on and I needed to get information from the people around the department. So for me to get that information, I had to like, every morning I, I could go, I, I was, I think among the first people to go in and I greet all the lawyers because I know that I need information from those lawyers later on. And then to introduce myself, so that they can also know who they are and share different events there so you can check them out on event right or straight onto their website you sign up and go and network with them also if you have a field like your particular where you want to, uh, where you want to network with them they have like links on linkedin as he said you can follow them on linkedin and see what's happening with their organization Thank you all for highlighting the importance of networking some of you may have heard this before they say your network is your net worth so, something to reflect upon. All right. Some of us may not necessarily be sure about what we're interested in. Do you have any tips on how we can find a sense of direction? Um, I think I'll go first. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, um, follow, if you don't have any idea, but have just a little tiny thing about like, what you want to do, you can just go ahead and research uh, whether anybody is doing it. And if nobody is doing it, uh, you can, that, that might be your business next business opportunity. But if someone is doing it already, you can learn from what they've done and grow your project as well. But also, if you have zero idea, it's always good like first find maybe some, find some work somewhere as you like, you, you try to um, assess what you, what's really good for you. Because once you jump into something which you have no idea, you might fail. But it's good always, because me, I take my, my business, I didn't really know where it was going. I just had an idea that I can produce accounts and, and things like that. But once you get started, every single step of the way, it's like you take your project, your, your business or your project as a learning process because every single thing you do is like a learning process. When I just said, I didn't know that I, I had to get insurance. Once I got insurance, I had to get um, to register for tax, register for VAT, register as an agent for HMRC. All the things I didn't know about them until when I got the client and said, you need to do this and this. So it's, it's as long as you get started, that's the main point. And you grow, you develop your, your your project as you go along. Yeah, I, w I would say the same thing as well. I think once you experience something, then you know um, if it's right for you. So try and get the experience, try and volunteer, try and get the internship. Yes, it can be hard, but that experience is the thing that will make you, you know, decide what career path you're gonna go through. Um, I'd also say careers advisors as well. Career advisors can help you in a, in a big way, um, and they can actually, you know, warn you or you know help you understand which pathway you want to take. Um, and one thing that a lot of people do is that they when they apply for jobs, they do it alone. They they do it by themselves, and that way they they don't have any guidance or they don't have any um, any any way of of seeing that you know this is the correct career path I want to take. So. Having careers advisors is something which is really important. Yes, it might be awkward, but it's something that really will help you. And it helped me as well because, for example, there's certain fields like business analyst or computer science 
they might be quite boring jobs and you might not actually enjoy them. So careers advisors can help you and warn you, um, you know, about those kind of things and uh, really, you know, save you a lot of time and stress as well. Mohammed, where do you find those career advisors? Well, you can find it at other university, but externally there's, you know, companies like Workpath, um, Peabody, but you just have to do some research on, on the careers advisors. It's mostly on the research. Thank you. Ara? Um, I would say again, uh, it's completely fine to ask for help when you don't know what to do. And the professors, your professors would also you know, be willing to help you, the career uh, advice departments. I'm sure there are many resources that you could use within the university and I think you, know, you should use them because they will be able to help you with, um, with what you are, you know, as with, uh, with anything that you, you think you can't uh, do. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, because they have been there, you know, they have been where you have been, and uh, so they will be able to assist you. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I wanted to add something. Um, be, be, like, be flexible in your career. Don't be rigid in your career. Be flexible. Be free to switch. If you've done this and you feel like it's not working out, try something else. If, if, if it, maybe you've done finance or you're doing management and feel like, no, I want to work, work in healthcare. Be flexible, exactly. switch, yeah. Go and do maybe you study law. Go and go and do that. Yeah. You can always come back. But if you're really in one career and you feel like it's not working out, you're gonna be stressed. But once you once you <coughs> that you're flexible, you be flexible. You be you find happiness in your career. Back. Exactly. And you should also apply for jobs that are different as well. So don't only apply for jobs if you're if you're doing like finance as your degree. Don't only apply for finance jobs. Apply for marketing. Apply for HR administration and create different CVs tailored to the different departments as well. That way, you're not putting all, all the eggs in one basket. You're you know you're you're having different career options. So don't restrict yourself. You know, be open to different opportunities. Exactly. In a way, everything is is an experience. Yeah. You know, everything is a learning experience. You learn even when you don't get the job, and you learn how they you know to interview you, what questions they are asking. Um, and be willing to learn, uh, actually be willing to learn, be, be willing like, to be trained and learn, don't just attend, but will, be willingness to learn as well also important. Asking for help, yeah. career advisors, and uh, learning by the process of elimination through trial and error. Thank you for that. So, a little, a little more sort of focused lens into your own careers right now. Um, what brings you joy, and maybe takes away the joy from your current roles? Um, I could go. Um, I, in my case, nothing really takes away the joy from because I'm very persistent. I know it's going to work, and it's working. <coughs> um, and uh, what brings me joy is to achieve uh, when, whenever I achieve my milestones. So every success I have is one milestone. Every customer I have is a milestone. And for instance, this year I said I'm going to have you know, at least two universities buying my license, which I got one, and one I will get the other one. I still, we are still in 2023. I have three more weeks. Um, but I'm, so these are the things really, you know, achieving my milestones is what really makes me happy. Interesting. So you would say that there's nothing you dislike about your current role? Um, well, I do everything and it's really hard. And, but at the same time, uh, I learn everything. So now we are growing our team, of course, but still I need to be on top of uh, uh, every department. So you get to learn operation, marketing, PR, and you know, development, and management. So it's, 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 it's a great thing, because knowledge at the end of the day is something that you can't buy with money. And I'm learning, so I'm very happy. So nothing, no, it's fine. Just a it's difficult. It's just hard, that's all. <laughs> a follow-up on that. You said that you got one university and you didn't get the other. No, no, not that I didn't get it. We are still in the process. Oh, OK, yeah. got it. So let's just say, at your company, in your current role, if you have a setback, a professional setback, how do you overcome that? Um, adapt, adapt, adapting. So, you know, it's funny. 
I had different ideas about Happy Student, but I always adapt and you know, I thought it was going to be an app, but now it's, it's a software. So we had to adapt to what is working within the market, within your idea. And that's, you know, to, to be able to be flexible and uh, to be able to adapt, and that's, I think, how we, you know, I cope with, with, with my problems. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Evelyn. Um, what makes me sad is to see my clients not happy because the, the, the kind of work I do is very technical and once you get it wrong, it can affect the whole company. So every week we tend to run our clients' payroll and every week it, it makes me so happy when they don't reply to what they're sending their pay slips and payroll summaries and they then say, oh, I got less hours, oh, my money is not enough. I feel, I feel like satisfied I've, we've done a great job and also if there's no the, my client doesn't have any penalties from HMRC like you, you, you've submitted your, your, your reports very late so it makes me feel happy that I'm doing my job and I make sure I do it right first time so that I don't get any email from the client that this is not right this is not right so I put you put in I put in enough time so that I avoid any any com error communications like which will make my clients not happy so if it makes me so happy like oh i've done all the reports if everyone is happy no one is going to call to phone me on friday when they're making pay like the, when the staff are getting paid or at the end of the month no one is complaining oh i've got a letter from hmrc they did they've said i didn't submit the report some time they've charged me three thousand pounds and the money that like, if you can save the money from your clients that makes me really happy like, it, that's, that's why it, that, that's my passion. You can see how happy she is when she's <laughs> talking about her clients. Yeah. So my, the happiness of my clients is my passion. And also to seeing like when you get that new client that you didn't really expect, I feel like, wow, I'm doing very well here. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mohammed. Um, I think one of the main things is when you're, the things that you learn actually work when you, when, when you put them in practice. So, when, when you start a new graduate role, you, they train you up, they teach you everything about the job, about you know, um, the job roles and whatnot. So when, when you put those learnings into practice and it actually works, that's, when, uh, that's what makes me happy. Because I know that I'm developing a skill and I can actually use it for the future. Whether it be for like freelancing, starting in a new business or you know, going for, for the promotions. So the learnings, um, I'm putting that into practice, and when that works, that's what makes me happy. I think one of the things that is a bit challenging is the workload. Uh, I think when you do move up in a, in a company, the workload increases as well. So uh, one of the main things is that time management, you, you just gotta be on top of your stuff, and uh, some of the work can, can be quite, quite a lot, but it's, it's all about time management and uh, managing your work. Um, yeah, that's one of the questions. Thank you for sharing that. So my last question to you before we move to the student Q&A. A lot of the students here are just a few years before you. You, know, you were in those chairs just, just very recently. What are some do you have, do you, you might not, do you have any regrets about the things that you didn't do so that the students here can use that knowledge and that experience that you're parting with them today and not make those mistakes? Mm, okay, I, I don't really know, obviously we do make mistakes. Not mistakes, regrets, sorry, let me rephrase. No, I wouldn't say there's anything that I feel uh, that I... I am. Because I knew once I graduated from university and then Right, we learn from our yeah, mistakes, exactly. but whatever, yeah, my, I, my I understand, bad. no, my it's, bad. it's just, I don't think I have anything that I, I would, I feel like I regret. Okay. Yeah. 
I have a regret because we had so many resources at the university when I was still a student, especially the information on LinkedIn. There are so, so many information. There's a lot of information, free trainings there, but I didn't utilize all of them. And it was too, I found out when it's, it's too late for me to, like, to access the thing. So I regret that I didn't actually use it for the first time, that like it was available to us. And I, I, I realized it when it was kind of too late. I managed to utilize it towards the end, but I wish I started from first year. I would have gone, but by, by, by year three, I would have achieved a lot. So that's my regret, kind of. Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, one, one more thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe in like things happening on the right time? You know? Right time, right, right place. So in a way, I think that that happens. You know, in my case, I feel like if it didn't happen now, it means it's not the right time. So I have to wait and work more. So. Right. You know. No, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, I would say the same thing about LinkedIn learning as well. Uh, I don't have regrets, but there's things that I probably wanted to do more. So le learning more, you know, LinkedIn learning. But I think one of the main things was a side hustle. I know that a lot of people want to have like side hustles as well. Uh, that's one thing that I didn't do. So I'd highly recommend. For me, I still that's one of the aspirations I have. But uh, having a side hustle is something that um, I kind of regret. There's still time, but I think as students, you have a lot of time. You the risk isn't too high. Um, as long as you don't invest, you know, too much money in, into the side hustle, you know, and keeping the risks low is, is important. But I think trying something one whilst you're a student um, is something that you should do. Have a side hustle. Doesn't matter which industry. Doesn't matter if it's crypto. But as long as you're educated at it and you learn from the experts, then you can be successful in that side hustle. But at, at least try something. At least try a side hustle and see if that works for yourself. At, le at least you tried. Actually, talking about side hustles, that's a very good tip for students because, you know, as a student, you have those, like, some clothes that maybe some items you buy, but you don't actually use them. You can actually sell them and earn your money back, earn some extra money back. You can sell them either on eBay, uh, maybe Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vintage. Uh, yeah, vintage is free. You can earn your money back. Amazon and eBay might be a bit costly, but vintage is free, so you can start earning your free money from that. But be careful because HMRC has is tackling that those high side hustles because some people are using it, but they're not paying the right taxes. So make sure that you're you're following the right um, procedure and you're not uh, you're compliant because they are targeting those side hustles because most people are not being compliant. Thank you for sharing those lessons with myself and the students here. And thank you to our panelists um, for all the valuable information you shared with us and to our students for our attention and engagement. So we now have time for a Q&A session. Feel free to continue to post your questions in the live chat or ask via Mentimeter, which you can access through the link and entering the code in the chat. That's right up here. And uh, we have our first question. Yeah, feel free to also raise your hand. So, um, yeah, just go for it. But I'll read out the first one just to kind of start. So the first question is, what do you think are the skills or benefits that students may get from learning business management at university that will definitely lead them towards success in some form or fashion? Or maybe some of the skills that you learned at university that you picked up you think were definitely very helpful for you? Um... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll, like I'll go for it. Uh, you know, presentation, you know when you stand in front of the students and you start presenting your assignment? That's a very good skill because once you start presenting, you're building your confidence. And, and uh, employers or business partners, they want to see how confident are you, how, how, how knowledgeable are you in what you're talking about. So building those small skills, like communication skills, um, even like having school like working with Word or Excel, managing those those reports, it also it also happens. And also working on deadline because I, I know that when you're a student you have to do this report, you have to do this assignment and this and this. But you, some people do part 
time work as well while they're studying. So that time management, being able to balance your time, like I need to do my assignment, I need to be in lecture. So time management skill is also good for you. And also, um, I think presentation, the way you present yourself, be professional. Don't be, uh, follow that, that your, your, what that kind of job you're looking for or the, the, the career you're looking for. Prese represent yourself properly in that, so that people can respect you when you're speaking to them and they say, oh, this person is a good person can, can do business with this person. So your presentation, the way have eye co good eye contact when you're speaking to someone and always put on a smile. You know when you're speaking to someone, even if someone wants, wouldn't smile or wouldn't be good to you, but once you smile at that person, that person will smile back to you and my, the, you open up their heart so that they can give you more information from them. And I think that's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I yeah. found my answer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I think what really makes university useful <coughs> in life is that you learn how to do research. And that, 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 you know, that um, learning that was very useful for my business. Um, doing, you know, how to do proper research and how to find information. And at the end of the day, the information is really the power. Um, but obviously you develop your skill as you are, you know, you have to do and go out there and then work. And that way you could learn more. But with, with university, it's a, it's a place where you get, you know, get to have access to knowledge and learn how to do research. My personal opinion, by the way, it may not be true, but I just feel that, you know. Um, yeah, I think personally um, the main skills or knowledge from business management is meeting deadlines, the coursework, yeah. you know, just meeting deadlines. Exactly, that's uh, really important. Time management. Exactly. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. People skills was another thing, just meeting new people. People skills was something else. But I think the main thing uh, about university is that you just have to do things yourself. If, you, if you're going to be lazy, if you're going to procrastinate, if you're not going to put the effort in, you're not going to get nothing out of university. And uh, you're going to graduate, yes you might graduate and you might get 2-1 or first, but you might still struggle getting a job. So it's all about you um, putting in the work and on, on top of the studying as well. You have to put in the other work as well. That's what is going to you know, help you. And uh, one more thing. Um... Thank you. Respecting other people's opinion because you might you, they, let me say as you, you have your group work, you have you have you might have an idea, but it might not be actually the correct one. So listening to other people <coughs> and uh, putting together your information with them, so it's very very good. So everybody has an opinion, but you have to listen to them as well so that you, everybody is given an opportunity, not just one person to be. Exactly, the teamwork is, yeah, teamwork. is really good and yeah. you know, the deadline, teamwork. You learn how to work with other people, which is amazing. And you are going to use that for the rest of your life, I think, wherever you work. Unless you are a rock star. Even then, you need a band. So. <laughs> and, and, and also, you know, uh, things happen. So you might be like, let me say when you're doing your assignment, and maybe one, one member is not actually participating as you, that person is supposed to. That happens in business as well. So you might expect that this department has to give me this report, but they haven't actually given it to me, and I really need to take it. I need to, to, to do this assignment or to complete this report. You can offer to help that person. Maybe the person might be going in through a, a difficult um, moment at that, at that time. So offering to speak to the person and see how you can help them, why they are not actually participating, it might open up and actually find out why they are not performing according to the way they are supposed to. Yeah. It might not be personal, but they might be going through something. Perfect, thank you. And yeah, I can definitely echo working with people and people skills are very important. Um, the next question is, what is the biggest challenge you overcame in your career so far and what have you learned from it? Uh, I'll have to think a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to go first? Uh, the biggest challenge is raising finance, raising money for my business, because 
you have to when you start a business you expect that money is going to be coming in all throughout like throughout the business once you start the business but also it helped that challenge helped me to focus that actually the company might not need all that money so you the money you raise you have to invest it into some other other income generating things like maybe marketing things like that but raising finance is one of the biggest challenge in my business yeah um, I think for me, um, unfortunately, my manager, he, he was sacked from his job and a uh, few um, like people in, in the same department also leave as well. So like one of the main things about agency work, when you work for an agency or different companies, a lot of people like come and go, a lot of people leave, uh, new people come in. So when people leave, then a lot of the responsibility is given to you. So that's one of the things that I'm still going through right now. And maybe one thing, being employed, like being self-employed or owning your business, you can turn it into a workaholic. You feel like every time you're working on the, on the business, you have to do this and this and this and this. So it's quite of a challenge, like t getting time off work. So it's, it's, it's good to, when you're doing your business to say that I'm going to stop or, Six o'clock, I'm not gonna be looking in any report. If anything is not being done, I'm not doing any work until the next day. And always spend time, maybe weekend or a day, to have time off you, so that you can think properly. But when you're self-employed, when you're working for yourself, my work, see yourself keeping on working, 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 and draining yourself. So, yeah, be careful. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, thank you. I think for a startup, it's the finance, always the problem, always. Uh, but my biggest challenge was to sell my product. Despite being a very good salesman, I know I am, uh, working with universities is really hard because they have really hard bureaucracy and then you have to go through a lot of processes. Um, so that was really challenging for me. But um, as you know, <coughs> when they say first customer is always the hardest one and then things get easier and I hope that's what is going to happen with my business. Um, so I got my first and that was really challenging for me because at the end of the day you might have a beautiful really great product and if you can't sell it and have investment it's not going to you know, work it's not going to be sustainable so to make it sustainable for me the challenge was So yeah. Every year it changes. Okay. I don't know what it is right now, but... Yeah, what the challenges were and how you kind of went through the process, because I'm guessing for international students that would like to stay here, this is a big question that they keep coming After back After I graduate? To. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I felt that I need to start my business before I graduate, so that I could, you know, get my visa and uh, keep having business here as well. Um, it was, it was quite straightforward because I had an award, I had great references and so you need to get some awards and funds from those awards, from institutional uh, funds, like in my case was Santander and, um, and that really it made the process much more smoother and then it, could, it yeah. could have been difficult but it made it easier for me. Uh, I could 
could talk about the visa for international students because we do, we do have a recruitment agency and students you can take advantage of the sponsorship opportunity that some companies they do sponsor students they give them that they give them the five years but, but you, have you, have, you have to work really good, no? yeah you don't have to be really good but you have to willingness to learn because okay. they can train you on the job and you're willing to learn and you have to unfortunately you have to stick to them for five years they give you a visa for five years, you have to work for them for five years. But you're allowed to work 20 hours outside that sponsorship somewhere. But you can make use of those sponsors, sponsorship visas. You don't have to be in, in the same field, but you know that after, you know what you want. You're not going to struggle for at least five years for the student to get that visa. But yeah, there's a, that opportunity out, out there, but you have to research about it. Yeah, there's tier one, tier one. And then there is global talent, which is mine. Global talent. <laughs> yeah. okay. and, uh, yeah. and mainly, most of them they are common in healthcare sector. Most most recruitment, recruitment agencies they are in, in the healthcare sector. Yeah, so you can go there as an administrator or an accountant or something like that. But you can try your luck. That's good to know. Thank you. And then just final question to end on, and you will get the opportunity to come up afterwards and ask your questions as well. Uh, but where do you see yourself in the future? What are your aspirations from here? Maybe we can start with Mohammed first, or if you want to think about it, we can also start with someone else. No, sure, no problem. Um, I think uh, in terms of aspirations, I want to maybe become like a specialist in uh, marketing. That's one of the aims I have. Becoming a specialist in my field, that's what uh, one of the goals I have. And also um, start maybe starting a new business or a side hustle or something on the side so that I can actually um, uh, make income, you know, as well as the full time job as well. I think uh, having that additional income and starting something myself is a aspiration I have as well. Yes, me, um, I want I, I want my companies to grow. So um, I started Shua as like um, a small business, but through Shua I've managed to create an e-commerce business. So I'm trying to see that my, my companies grow, but I need to inspire other people, so that especially students, because when you're in the university, you feel like all oh, the jobs are there, but it's so hard once you graduate to find that particular job that you want. So it's always good like, to have the mindset, if I don't find work, I can always back onto my business, I can run my own business. So me, my, I want to inspire as many students or as many people, especially young girls, so that, so that they can go into business themselves. Because once you're working for yourself, you're, it's not a guarantee, but at least your, the money is, is more than being in. To me, I see it like, once you're self-employed, or you want to work for yourself, it's more money than you only being employed because once you're employed, they can just say how much you can earn. But once you're, you're working for yourself, there are some expenses that can actually be that like that money can be given back to you. As a in the US and um, we are also talking with some other businesses to create a happy employee for them uh, not just for students but also for for the employees as well for grown-ups um, my drive here is is helping people uh, being able to help people um, and I think that really drives me um, you know thinking about for instance um, you know, all the nurses who helped uh, people putting their lives on stage during the COVID uh, was very touching uh, for me. And I wanted to do something that were going to make uh, people's life easier. And um, that would, you know, that was one thing that I wanted to do is to be able to do something before I die. But, and that thing should be about helping a society or, you know, everybody. And I think that's where if that's what really drives me, and and I have milestones. I know what to do, and I'm more working towards those milestones. And also, I'll add on one more thing, because um, most people they they're scared of numbers, especially when you're working as an employee. 
uh, they give you your passive or uh, as an, um, a business owner, they give you your reports, but you don't really know what those figures are. You always say, oh, my, my accountant will, will explain that to me. But most accountants, they don't actually take time to explain those figures to their clients. But it's my passion to always teach my, my clients what the meaning of their figures, not just to give them the an income statement and say, that's the end of your report. But I need them to understand what the that report is and how far we can take them, maybe go from it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Once again, thank you to our wonderful panelists for the insightful discussion and to our students for their questions. Our colleague Rebecca Heer from the alumni team will present some opportunities and resources before we close. Okay. Uh, the slides and more information will be shared with you along with this recording from today in a post-event email. I'll hand this over to Rebecca. Hello everyone, um, I'm Rebecca and I work for the Enterprise Network. Uh, for you, our team was actually mentioned a lot by the speakers, but for the people that don't know, we are the Entrepreneurship Hub of the University and we help students that want to start a business or start a career as freelancers, so be self-employed. Um, we get this question quite a lot, so I want to clarify it straight away. Uh, all the services and all the programs are free to access while you're in uni, but also three years after graduation. So the first program is called Startup 101, and this program is tailored for students that want to start a, a business and that want to build a viable business idea. We have different workshops. They're mainly online, but we do, we do have some of them that are in person. Uh, we offer mentoring sessions um, and networking opportunities. Uh, those are the sessions that you'll be able to find in the Startup 101 program. So it guides you through the entire process of building an entrepreneurial mindset, to building a business model, um, a prototype in case it's needed, and also taking you through the what are the next steps of actually taking the business outside of university. Uh, the second program is called Freelance Essentials. This is mainly for students that want to be self-employed. Um, what I suggest is this is perfect for students that are not entirely sure if they want to be self-employed because it's a career that has many rewards but also many challenges. So this is the best way to start that side also. And we partner with two external apps, Underpinned and Freelance Club. And through those apps you can just build a profile, uh, put your CV or your portfolio and that you can start pitching to clients for, for jobs. Um, so you can start earning money almost immediately. Um, sorry, after accessing both those programs, uh, we have in-program funding as well as a competition that is called The Big Idea. Uh, just last week we gave £12,000 to different students that access the, the programs. And this is just if you start one of the programs. We're going to have those mixers events during the year. So every four or five months. entrepreneurship or how to build a mobile app um, or an e-commerce website and yeah that was it thank you very much let me know if you want to talk to me later on and I have some leaflets yeah perfect thank you thank you to our panel for coming today and speaking to our students and if you can fill out the survey that would be great you can win an Amazon voucher and uh, yeah, afterwards, please feel free to come up and speak to the speakers as well if you've got more one-on-one -on -one questions. And yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.